and welcome back. In this video, I am going to derive the ball's radius, which is r equal to n squared x squared epsilon naught all over pi m e squared. How does this expression comes about? It is about uh, balls retaining the model of uh, Rutherford, and then he was able to postulate one of his it postulates or it postulates, uh, have it that an electron revolves around a circular orbit. So if an electron revolves around a circular orbit in a dynamic position, then it means that the uh, it needs a centripetal force to balance the columbic force. Of course, we know that centripetal force is the force that pulls an object towards the center of a cycle. So in order for that to balance, the electron to balance in its dynamic uh, circular orbit, then it needs to, it needs the electrostatic force to balance it. All right. So in the nutshell, Balls came up with an expression that the the columbic or electrostatic force will have to balance the centripetal force. All right. So the expression is the columbic force, you can call it columbic or electrostatic force, would have to be equal to the centripetal force for an electron to constantly revolve around the nucleus of an atom. And then electrostatic force has this relation. Of course, from Coulomb's law, we know that this F subscript E is equal to KQ1, Q2, all over R squared. These are charges. In this case, instead of using Q1, Q2, uh, because they are the same charges, of course, because Q is equal to Q1 equal to Q2. So we have to square the two charges if they multiply. If they are the same charges, they have to multiply themselves to give us Q squared, which is also E squared, because they are all charged and they are measuring column. All right? So that is the expression we're having at the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, this expression is for centripetal force. All right. So let's deduce this equation. From this first point, since the centripetal force has to balance the columbic force, we can make e to the power of 2 the subject of the relation. And if that will be achieved, we have to cross multiply this and we have arrow ke squared equal to mv squared arrow squared. Of course, if we are to make E squared the subject of formula, we divide both sides by arrow k. So we have mv squared arrow squared all over arrow k. All right. At this point, this arrow can easily reduce one of these. And for this v, we can put this expression to be in this format, mv arrow, okay? And then we can clone this v like this, and we have k. Because v times v will still give us v squared. All right, we can number this equation so that we can make reference at some point in time. Uh, this is equation two. I don't want to make it bulky, so when I arrive at a certain point, I will make it an equation. So if this is equation two, what is the next approach that we're going to follow up? We will need to substitute the Bohr's condition of quantization of angular momentum. Let's put it down. Substitute, substitute the Bohr's condition of quantization, quantization of angular momentum. And what is this boss? Uh, we are substituting for this expression mv arrow, and the expression is mv arrow equal to nh all over 2 pi. You just make this equation 3. So we have to substitute mv arrow for the boss condition of angular momentum. All right, so if we are to do that, it means 
from equation 2, we can substitute the value of this equation 3 into equation 2. So I'm having mv arrow. So in place of this mv arrow, I'll substitute nh all over 2 pi. Right? So let's do that. I will have this point to be e squared equal to, in position of this, I will replace it with nh and then this v all over 2 pi. Multiply by the k that's already there. All right, this could be equation four. All right, at this point, we are also going to make the V, which is the velocity, the subject of the relation. And if we make this subject of relation, we cross multiply the denominator here, and we have a two pi, let's write it well, two pi k e squared, would be equal to nhv. So if we want to make the v the subject of the formula, then we should be having v to be equal to, dividing both sides by the nh, we have 2 pi k e squared all over nh. And this will be equation 5. Right? Now we're going to substitute the equation while we're making all this substitution the idea is for us to be able to arrive at this wonderful expression or equation for Bohr's atomic radius and then what we need to do at this point is to substitute the value of this v which are all this value wherever we see v in equation three so wherever we see v we substitute the whole of this equation here so what are we going to do at that point let's go there so here we have m in place of v. I will rewrite, I will replace it with this. So I'll have 2 pi k e squared over nh. This will multiply by arrow, like you see already, equals, we have the right hand side to be nh all over 2 pi. Okay, so we won't have to make this equation. Let's clear the brackets. So at this point, we have m2 pi k e squared arrow all over nh equal to nh all over 2 pi. So what will be the next approach at this point? I have to cross multiply the equation. And if I cross multiply this to this, this will only affect the 2 pi here, thereby increasing it to 4 pi squared k e squared arrow equal to, if this multiplies by this, it will increase n squared and also h squared. So at this point, we are going to make arrow the subject of the formula, which is the balls we are looking for. Arrow will be equal to dividing both sides by the coefficient of this arrow. So we have n squared h squared all over m 4 pi squared k e squared. All right. Now, looking at this expression, we are having k, and this k is uh, a constant that has a value which is, we can say where k is equal to 1 all over 4 pi epsilon naught. And that epsilon naught is the permittivity of a free space, and it has its constant value as 8.85 times 10 to the power of minus 12 force per meter. So we're going to substitute already you see that k has an inverse so if you're taking the inverse of this to this expression then this has to go to the numerator all right so let's take a good space for this all right let's use this space so that it becomes more nicer all right so let's get away with this point so here we will we will substitute this value have n squared h squared we have to invert this because we have one over which is the inverse or the reciprocal so we are inverting this term and if we are inverting the term from the denominator point this will come to the numerator so we have 4 pi epsilon naught over the denominator we have m4 pi squared k okay k has been changed to that expression so what is left here is e squared. All right, so what is the next approach? We will, we will observe that four can cancel each other here. 
pi can also reduce this. And then we have n to the power of 2 h squared epsilon naught all over. Here we have m pi e. So pi is a number, a constant that has uh, 3.142. So it comes in first. Then we have the mass. The mass is the mass of electron. And then we have also the value of electron here all squared. You can see that we are able, we are able to derive the Bose models or the Bose radius, atomic radius. Now, we are not only meant to derive this expression, but also to calculate, to calculate the Bose radius. Now, what we are having here, every parameter we are having here, they are constant. In course of defining this constant, we have n to be 1, so you could range from 1, 2, 3 to infinity, as the case may be. H is uh, the Planck's constant. Planck's constant, or Planck's constant has its value to be 6.64. You can just write 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joule seconds. All right, we still have this epsilon to be the permittivity, the permittivity of a free space and it has its constant value as 8.85 times 10 to the power of minus 12 force per meter all right okay we have also pi to be 22 over 7 pi to be okay 22 over 7 which is 3.142 approximately and then we still have another important constant here which is m M here represents the mass of electron, and the mass of electron is 9.1 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilogram. Of course, you know we have the mass of proton, and that will be uh, 10 to the power, uh, 9.1 times 10 to the power of minus 27 kilogram. That's for mass of proton, and that this is uh, that uh, this is for electron. All right, then finally we still have E, which is for electron, and electron has its value to be 1.6, all right, times 10 to the power of minus 19 column. All right, so these are the necessary uh, parameters. When we substitute all these parameters into this equation, of course, in some cases, we can make uh, an atom, you can still work on this equation such that if an atom it means, um, is meant to have a, a z starting from 2, 3, 4 as the case may be, then we can still evaluate this equation to be r equal to n squared h squared epsilon not all over pi m, you can have z here, e squared. But this will not be necessary at the moment. Our interest is to substitute this expression into this formula. And if we substitute this into this formula, then you see that R will be equal to, of course, for us to get the Bose atomic radius, we have to make the n, the value of n to be one. So if n is one, if the value of n is one, so it means n, which is one squared is one. So here we have the value of the Planck's constant, which is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the power of minus 34. This value is squared, and we have the next one by it, which is the permittivity of free space, 8.85 times 10 to the power of minus 12. Divide by, we have 3.142. This will multiply by the mass of electron, which is 9.1 times 10 to the power of minus 31. And this also will multiply by that of charge, which is uh, 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. And this value is also squared. Therefore, arrow will be equal to, by the time you evaluate this equation, you will have 0 0.48 times 10 to the power of minus 10. All right. And the unit of the unit of this arrow radius is in meters. And you can have this approximate value of this radius to be 0 0.5 times 10 to the power of 
times 10 to the power of minus 10 meters or you can leave the answer in this form of course 10 to the power of minus 10 means an Armstrong unit an Armstrong Armstrong unit an Armstrong unit has 10 to the power of minus 10 right this is equivalent to an Armstrong unit so you can have this to be 0 0.5 a to the power of naught or a naught and this a naught represent Armstrong and Armstrong Armstrong is equivalent to 10 to the power of minus 10 meters so that is how we can calculate and also derive the Bohr's atomic radius so if you like this video please make sure you subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification for more video and then share. Thank you very much. Stay peace.